Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Build Computers. Today I'm going to be doing a feature review of the Corsair 275R Airflow case. So just a forewarning, this review is not going to include thermal testing and stuff like that, simply because I'm not set up for that. Gamers Nexus, on the other hand, are very much set up for that. So check them out for reviews on thermal performance in cases, because their testing methodology is second to none. So yeah. Um, what you will get from this video though is I'm going to go over this thing, give my opinion on what I think of the case and what I like um, what I like about it and what it's like to build in. And then you can form your own opinion on whether you think it's the right kind of case for you. So I want to preface this review just by pointing out that I feel like um, cases have cases kind of got a little bit stale toward the end of last year um, where the meta was just a flat front panel tempered glass side panel and your internal and you know PSU shroud on the internal layout and it was kind it was getting to the point where I really felt like all cases were just the same and it was yeah I was certainly at the point where I'm just like I don't know if I even care anymore they all look the same it's like phones you know all phones look the same there's only so many variations you can do of a black square with a with a screen on the front of it um However, what I really like about the new Airflow Meta is that now we can start doing all kinds of funky designs on the front panels with the venting. And Corsair, as far as I can tell, seem to be leading the charge with this. Obviously, for best airflow, you want to do some kind of super min-maxed mesh design that has the maximum flow rate in it and stuff like that. And if you're a mega airflow nerd and you want top thermals and stuff like that, then you're kind of going to select your case just based on performance charts of which one is better. However, if you like aesthetics, and I like aesthetics, then for me, what Corsair have been doing with their front panel designs is super interesting. Now with this one, um, I was a big fan of the Corsair 220T's front panel. I thought that was a really cool design, and I kind of prefer it to this one, but I really appreciate what they're doing with this, is just different designs, something that looks different. That's what I'm looking for here. And this just sort of, odd hatching pattern that they're going for is super cool. Now, um, the front panel, this is pure plastic. If I take this off, and the way you do that is the old fashioned way of grab the bottom of the panel and just pull forward and it will come off. This is just, this is just all pure plastic. It's very scratchy plastic. It's not, it's not terribly high quality if I'm honest. You know, I mean, if you look at the actual fittings and stuff like that, you're just like, huh, this is just, plastic there's nothing more to it but I don't really mind because this is a reasonably good value case um, I've forgotten the price of it so it's on screen now somewhere um, I think it's reasonably good value this case uh, and also like what I kind of appreciate this is that because this is just a sheet of plastic this is really ripe for modding as well like you could do, it'd be very easy to do a spray paint job on this if you wanted to just spray paint a logo or emblem on it or something like that. You mean, I'm not saying you should change the whole color of the case or the side or the front panel, although you could do that if you wanted, but you could get a stencil of a cool logo of a show you like or a franchise you like, just put that on there, just spray paint rattle can your stencil on there and have a cool logo theme on your case. Um, and one of the things, because this is just such a simple plastic front panel, it makes it really easy to do stuff like that with it. And because it's just ordinary plastic, you can't really go wrong with that. You, would, you wouldn't even need to do any prep work with that. You know, it'd be super easy. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, it is reasonably strong. As you can see, we've got these baffles on the inside, which do, I mean, it is flexible, but you know, I'm, yeah, I'm fine with that. I think it's fine. Um, on behind that front panel, we've got the standard issue triple intake uh, with a magnetically removable mesh filter. So again, the nice thing about Corsair cases, really easy to remove mesh filters. I like this a lot. Um, and yeah, you get these two 120 mil fans at the front as standard. There's another 120 mil fan at the back of the case that comes with it as well. These are, they're only three pin fans um, and they're not LED or anything, so they're nothing to write home about, but it's nice that you get three of them with the case. Um, most of the time, if, if, the fa if the case isn't coming with fancy fans, I would usually expect it to come with just the single token gesture fan at the back. But as I say, you get three 
and obviously you can move them around into whatever configuration you want. As you can see here, we've also got rails for 140 millimeter fans, and we do also have a cutout in the um, uh, the PSU shroud, which we'll see closer in a minute. So you can mount a 360 mil radiator down the front as well. So lots of room for cooling in this case. And that's the other reason why I bought this case for the build that I'm doing here over the 220T. I, I really like the Corsair 220T. However, I'm putting in a big graphics card into this build. We're putting in a 2080 Super, and that's going to be a long graphics card, big triple fan cooler. And the Corsair 220T starts getting a little bit sketchy when you want to put in a all-in-one water cooler and a very long graphics card. It can be done, but you start having to min-max and start measuring everything up. And for a customer build, I don't really want to start messing around with that. I want to buy a case like this one that's just slightly bigger on the forward dimensions and will just fit everything. So let's stick this guy back on. Moving up to the front panel. What was that? That must have been a loose screw or something. Moving up to the front panel. Um, as you can see, Corsair still haven't learned to make a front panel USB 3 port that actually looks nice. Um, so again, my disappointment is immeasurable. However, I'm kind of used to this from Corsair by now. Um, we have got a power button and a reset button. They feel reasonably nice. Tactile buttons, um, they look attractive. The power button will light up. Those will look nice as well. And we've got a combo headphone jack there. Um, I prefer to have a separate mic and headphone jack just so you don't need the adapter. However, this isn't a deal breaker for me because, I mean, everyone I know uses a USB headset anyway. So it's up to you whether you actually care about that or not. Um, so yeah, make of that what you will. Um, I will be more impressed if it actually comes with the adapter for it. Um, that will also be very good for me. I haven't checked yet, so we'll find out. Up on the top of the case, we've got a very large air vent that's got room for a 240mm radiator. It's got a bit of extra railage for 140mm fans or a 280mm radiator, but it doesn't extend all the way across. I have a suspicion that um, it, they are not expecting you to put a 280mm radiator up here because it's most likely going to foul against the VRM heat sinks on your motherboard. Uh, which wouldn't surprise me in the least. Although, since they've put like half the rails there, you'd think they'd, they'd just put all the rails there anyway and just leave it up to you. Um, however, if, you're, if your motherboard, if it clears your motherboard, you could probably stick a 280mm radiator up there anyway and just leave out one corner of the screws, and that'll be fine. So you could probably cram that up there if you wanted to, but they're obviously intending you to use 240mm rads up here. Around the back of the case, um, it's really nice build quality. It doesn't have that horrible stamped tin feel to it that a lot of cases have. Corsair is one of the diehards for having an inset I.O. panel like this. Notice how this is set inwards, which means you don't have one of those stupid bits that stick out. Although they've kind of ruined it by having that for here for the vertical graphics card mount, but uh, I don't mind that. Um, I actually prefer this design a lot. However, Corsair seem to be one, almost the only manufacturer who are still doing it. You sacrifice a little bit of internal length for your graphics card. However, on the case like this, it doesn't matter anyway. This was more of an issue on the Corsair 220T, where you were losing another 10 mil of precious length space. However, on this, it looks great. Um, because I've got the, um, the black and white version here, I really like the contrast of having the black PCI blanking plates on the white case. That looks great. Uh, likewise, as you can see, the rear 120mm fan mount, we've got a little bit of vertical height adjustment on that as well, so you can align your fans if you so choose. Uh, that vertical graphics card mount, uh, you can use it if you want, but it's basically worthless if you're not doing custom water cooling on your graphics card, because that guy is going to mount your graphics card right up against the front glass and completely block off any air cooling on it. So. Uh, they put these things in, I feel like, for the sake of it, but I don't think they're particularly useful. If you're actually doing a vertical graphics card mount, I don't think you'd want... I wouldn't really want to put it up front like that anyway. I'd want to mount it further back using some kind of adapter on the main PCI plates, which puts it sort of in the middle of the case, if you see what I mean. But hey, that's me. I haven't actually done one of those builds before, so I'm speaking in ignorance there.
The side panel it uses the standard four thumb screw attachment method, which looks nice, but is a pain in the ass to remove. It'd be nice to see Corsair trying to implement um, an easier method than this. I really want Corsair to um, do... Uh, NZXT have got really nice quick release glass side panels on their cases. I've got a H500i at home which has the quick release side panel and it's brilliant. I love it to bits. So it would be nice if Corsair kind of came up with their own implementation of that, but I've no idea when that's going to happen. So side panel off. It's not, uh, it's not smoked either, which I like. I'm not a fan of smoked side panels. It just means you need to put a crap ton of lighting in your computer to be able to see anything in there. And the point of having a side panel is to be able to see inside the computer. So yeah, not a fan of smoked glass. On the inside of the case, we've got a you know very standard layout. There's not much really to speak of here. Um, the power supply enclosure, as I mentioned earlier on, it's got the cutout at the front for 360mm front radiators. Um, and we've also got vents for your power supply to be either way up, which is good because I like to put my power supplies fan side up because then it means that the bottom uh, filter here, it means you never have to worry about cleaning that out. And um, there will be arguments until the end of time as to whether that matters or not. It matters to me because it means when I send this off to my client, I don't have to nag them to make sure they're actually cleaning the filter. Because it means that if, they, if this ends up being put on the floor underneath the desk, I don't need to worry about the power supply choking at all. I'm going to put it fan side up so it can just intake from inside. It's fine. Um, so that's that. Uh, we've got all the standoffs are pre-fitted and they're in the usual locations. We've got the nice little notched standoff in the center here, which helps locate the motherboard in place. So that makes building nice and easy. Um, we've got uh, grommets around the front here for your PCI Express cables. That's quite a wide one. So you can have a nice sort of double eight pin line coming out of that and have them all nice and straight. Um, on uh, some cases, that guy is 90 degrees around and you kind of have to have your cables coming out as a bundle and then try and fan them out as best you can. Whereas this is a nice straight line so you can have a big mess under here and have them all come out perfect there. Very nice. Um, vertical height, there's not a lot of vertical headroom in here. So, you know, where I mentioned about that top grill there, I can kind of see why they didn't bother putting the rail at the back because um, you're, if you're running a top mount radiator in this case, I can see you potentially having headroom issues. I kind of wanted to top mount a radiator in this, so I will be testing to see how well that works. Um, but in the worst case, we can throw the radiator up front and that'll be just fine as well because we've got loads of forward space in this. Around the back of the case, we've got two 2.5mm two mounts which have got thumb screws on them, so those are nice. I generally don't use these myself. I prefer to put 2.5mm drives um, down in the main hard drive caddy because it's very unlikely in in most meta builds It's very unlikely that you're going to have anything more than a three and a half inch hard drive and a two and a half inch SSD And on most builds that I do including this one you're going to do m2 to victory anyway So you're not gonna have any drives at all um, However, if you want to cram this thing full of drives You can get two three and a half inch drives in there and two two and a half inch drives over there should you want to it looks like we've got reasonably good clearance for the power supply. However, it looks like this hard drive cage does not slide backwards and forwards, which means if you're not running uh, on most modern cases these days, if you're not running that 360 mil rad at the front, you can slide this guy about an inch or so to toward the front of the case to get a little bit more room for your power supply and cable tidying. That's not possible on this case, which is a little bit disappointing. Although you can remove this cage altogether if you're not using it. So that's uh, that's fine. It looks like we've got pretty good space for the power supply anyway. I'll measure all this up uh, while I'm building just so I can put measurements on screen to let you know whether you're likely to have any issues with power supplies or not. Uh, the box of tricks has a pretty good supply of screws in here. We've got a really good uh, range of screws um, in both uh, the imperial and metric ones. So that is the um, uh, the 632, which is the imperial size, and M3 uh, for metric. We've got a load of fan screws in there, self-tappers. We've also got some long boy fan screws for radiators and stuff, which is nice. And we've got a couple of uh, cable ties. 
And there is an extra standoff in there as well, just in case you need one. Right, that's our overview complete. So I'm gonna build this thing up now. We'll do a quick montage shot of that so we can move on to conclusions. Um, however, if you want to see a full build video of me building this thing up, that will probably be posted separately to this. So check the description down below and when it exists, there will be a link there. build is complete and in terms of space this case is providing exactly the kind of requirements that I needed from it which is a stylish low-cost Corsair case very similar to the 220T but something with more legroom for longer graphics cards we've got a very long RTX 2080 Super in here with big triple fan and a front mount radiator and there was room to spare well not by much but there was room to spare so basically, whatever you want to put into this case, it's going to fit. So this provides you with something that has got sort of the modern sleekness of the 220T and an airflow-oriented front panel. However, without the compromise that we're seeing on a lot of modern cases that are very short. And I love those short cases because if you don't have a long graphics card, having a short case can make it feel incredibly compact um, without actually compromising on room for your motherboard. Um, however, this case will accommodate these big graphics cards without any problems. Um, general issues I had while building, um, there's not a lot in the way of holes along the front for your um, for all the noodly wires and front panel wires and stuff that plugs in along the bottom of the motherboard. Not a lot of choice there at all. Wasn't a fan of that. It made building awkward with cable tidying. Usually I'm used to, even on the 220T, you just run a cable down there, fumble around and there'll be a hole that you can put that cable through. That was not the case here. There was just no options except for that single grommet along the bottom. The top of the case didn't have the same issue. There was plenty of room there to run cables out. However, the vertical height of the case is such that top mounting a radiator is really limited. Um, if you've got tall RAM like RGB RAM, a la the stuff I'm using here, which is Corsair Vengeance RGB, you cannot top mount your radiator. 
Although that much being said, I said the same thing about the Corsair 220T and I recently discovered that there are some motherboards where the RAM slots are mounted just a little bit lower down, which will actually give you space. I'm not sure. I think you might get the same thing with this one. With a different motherboard, you might not have that issue, but I can make no guarantees and don't ask me if a specific motherboard or memory will fit because honestly, I don't know. It depends. You've got to measure it all up. Um, however, it's something to keep in mind. But with the lot, with the length that we've got in this in this case, it's not an issue because you just front mount your radiator instead. Problem solved. And thankfully, because it came with three airflow fans, we front mounted our radiator with two fans on that. We've moved the front fans to the top, so we've got three exhaust fans, and that's basically our cooling taken care of. This case would love to have RGB fans in it. If you're a fan of RGB, this thing wants RGB in it. Um, however, on this particular build, uh, my budget could only go so far, but that is something that could easily be done later on with this one. Another thing that kind of irked me as well is the fact that the hard drive cage can't be moved forward. I mean, if you're not using a lower front fan and you're not using a 360mm rad, there's zero reason not to just shunt the hard drive cage all the way up to the front of the case and just get that extra room for the power supply. Considering how long this case is, um, I found it surprisingly awkward to fit all my power supply cables in. Um, however, it does all go in. And the other annoying thing as well is that you can't remove the hard drive cage while the power supply is fitted, which I thought was really vexing because the obvious thing to do when you're building in a case like this is just to pull that hard drive cage out, do all of your cable tidying and your power supply stuff, and then put the hard drive cage back in if you've got room for it. You can't do that on this one. You have to put that hard drive cage in. You can unbolt it and slide it upwards to give yourself a bit of extra space and then move it back afterwards. However, I found that wasn't actually very useful in the end. So as I say, despite the size, this wasn't the easiest case to build in. However, in terms of what I needed it to do, I'll have be a, a standard mid tower that's a bit stylish and have this nice white on black aesthetic and accommodate a big, huge graphics card, it delivers that in spades. So as I say, I like this quite a lot. In terms of bang for buck, it's okay. Um, you know, uh, Corsair have got cases that I think are better value for money than this, because at the end of the day, it's a standard case with a tempered glass side panel. That's it, there's nothing special. There's no fancy RGB, there's no twist, there's no cleverness with this case. And for the price tag that you pay for it, it's okay. This again is by comparison with the Corsair 220T, which is very similarly priced, but you get those three RGB fans and the lighting node core, um, which adds a lot of value to that case. And that's not present in this one. However, by the same token, the build quality and the, um, the amount you can fit into this case does make up for that. So on that note, I'm fine with it. Um, I've mentioned before, it would be nice if Corsair could do something other than just the four bolt design with these. There are lots of other manufacturers now that are doing um, easier to remove side panels, quick release stuff, or just sliding side panel style stuff. There's other options than just the four thumb screws, which are a pain in the backside. Um, but I'm nitpicking at this point. There's also just randomly a screw hole there, and I don't know why. Um, and that's like, why are you there? Maybe it's, uh, well, yeah, no, I have no idea why that's there and I don't think it needs to be there, but eh, that's fine. Past that, I will finish with this now. I've got to configure this computer and then send it out to the customer. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye for now.